My wife, Barbara, and I were fortunate to go ice fishing. It was tough to find some safe ice, but through contacting friends, we found some safe ice and we went out and uh, we only did a couple hours fish and we caught some nice walleye and one perch to keep for eating. We released some walleye as well. So these are the two walleyes. You can see this platter. The fish were about uh, 15 to 17 inches long. And there's one small perch right here. I'm going to hold it up. You can see it was about uh, nine inches. So by no means was it a jumbo, but uh, it's good enough for eating. So what I've done is I've kept the uh, cheeks from the wall. I even kept the eggs. Here are the eggs from the perch right here. because so I'm going to be cooking them up. But I'm going to do a little bit different recipe. I'm going to be testing uh, a different fish coating called Outdoor Flavors that was suggested by one of my good friends. And uh, I'm going to do these fish old school. When I say old school, what I've done is I've scaled the walleye. I've cut the head off and I've left the fins on there, dorsal fin, tail, and so on. I'm going to be cutting it into chunks about uh, one and a half inches in width. I'm going to be coating them and then I'm going to be frying them in a cast iron pan. So, you know, from all the travels that I've done throughout the world, whether it's been in India, Thailand, in Europe, uh, Scandinavia, most people don't fillet their fish. They uh, cut the fish in chunks, either big chunks or small chunks, and they cook them with the bones. And then uh, if they're just fried, they just take the flesh off and discard the bones, or they'll use the fish in different soups and stuff. And a lot of times they'll even use the heads. And uh, if uh, they're making a broth and stuff, they'll use all the bones that are left and even the heads. So I'm sure this is common throughout the islands in the Caribbean and Atlantic where I've traveled to Christmas Island in the South Pacific. So it's a great way to enjoy fish, even though you have to clean a little bit. Okay, let's start cutting these fish up. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a large cutting board and uh, I'm placing the fish on here one at a time. And I'm placing the head closer to you so you can see what I'm doing. The other thing that I'm doing, I'm, I'm not using a fillet knife because I've got to go through some vertebrae. So this is a serrated knife. It's flexible, it's kind of like a fillet knife but um, it's got a serrated edge. You can probably see that on there. It's just going to help me cut through the bones. So this is where I'm going to start. First cut is just behind the clethrum. You can hear the spine. Some people will use a cleaver to do this, but I like using a, a narrow knife that has teeth. And uh, I've left the wings on here. So there's the first piece. You can see right there. So... We call this the wings, the front part of it here, because there's lots of nice meat there. A lot of times that gets discarded. And uh, that's the part that goes right up to the head. So that's the first piece. Second piece, about an inch and a half. It's going to get a little bit easier to cut as we get closer to the tail, because the bone's going to get narrow, the vertebrae. This piece there. And I'm just going to keep cutting the rest of them. I'm trying to cut them as evenly as I can, about inch or an inch and a half in size, because they'll cook evenly that way. As I get close to the tail, I'm going to just reverse the fish so I can hold on to the long part of the tail. And as many of you know, when you get into the uh, back end of the tail, past the rib cage, there's very few bones there. It's just nice meat like this here, you can see um, beautiful little fillet there. Not fillet, little chunk. And I'm gonna go like that, like that. And I'm even gonna do the tail portion. We're gonna fry that up as well. Okay, so this is the first fish. It was about a 16, 17 inch fish. You can see all the meat that we have there nicely. I'm gonna do the same with the second walleye, and then we're gonna leave the perch whole, and we'll be ready to coat them and to fry them. You know, I have friends that are all different anesthetics, Russian, Polish, Ukrainian, Asian, even South America, Brazil, and so on. And I must tell you that in a lot of those countries where they come from, you don't just go out and get limits of fish because there's so much competition. So when you get a fish, you save every part of it. So this is where this comes from. The only thing is that you have to be careful if you... Uh, have children at the table you have to clean some of the bones out of the fish for them but it's a good way to teach them even when they're young to be very careful not to swallow any bones and the nice thing is that you don't waste any fish 
you really use almost every part of the fish, whether it's the eggs, the bones, the skin, which I love because it's nice and crunchy. So this is the last piece here. Okay, so there's the two walleye, and there's my perch that I've got ready to go. I know he seems small, but he's going to be fine for eating. There's going to be lots of meat there. Okay, let's get these fish coated and in the frying pan. We are ready to start coating. Now, this is the, the coating that I'm experimenting with today. So it's called Outdoor Flavors. My good friend, uh, J.R. Paquette, who uh, makes a thing called a bait to go. It's a live bait container that we use for ice fishing. Um, we actually use it when we caught these walleyes that we're cooking up. Um, came out with this product. It's nice because it's a Canadian product. And what I like about it is, if you look at the back, it has very low sodium. It's only about 16% sodium, which is a salt that we try to use like sea salt in our kitchen when we're cooking. So it's all nice ingredients. And he said, you got to start off by trying the roasted garlic, butter, and chives. That sounds pretty fancy. I'm going to try it. So notice what thing I'm doing. I'm using a little ladle because I don't like to get, they have like a Ziploc top on the bag. So I don't like to get the uh, coating in there because then it won't seal properly and it could spill over if you have it in your cupboard. So what I'm doing is using a small ladle like this and taking only out what I need and putting it on the plate. And then we're ready to go. So I'm going to leave that there. You can see also that there are other flavors, lemon pepper dill, campfire barbecue, crispy Cajun, and the one that I'm tying, the roasted garlic, butter, and chives. Now, they even come um, without any gluten. So some are gluten-free, and there's also fish uh, batters, but I'm using the coating. So I'm excited to try this. Now, the reason I'm using a cast iron pan is because it doesn't flex. You know, if you use um, an aluminum frying pan that's thin, a lot of times when... Uh, you start applying heat to it, and I like to cook my fish at a pretty high heat, um, it'll start to warp. So the w w oil will go on the edges of it as opposed to all over the center. So a cast iron pan is probably the best for doing this. It doesn't have the Teflon coating, so you don't have to worry about scratching it off and getting it to you. So I'm taking a little piece of cheek from the fish, and I'm dropping it in the oil to make sure that the oil is hot enough. So you can probably hear it sizzling. So I think that is ready to go. So it doesn't matter which fish piece you take. I just literally, you could use a fork if you didn't want to get your hands messy, but I don't mind uh, using my hands to do this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is about um, four or five pieces, and I'm going to get them ready. Now what I'm doing is I'm letting the seasoning attach itself to the fish a little bit. So I'm not just dropping it right in, because there is a little bit of absorption, because I don't want to lose that nice flavor from the fish coating. You know, I've been eating fish ever since I was a child. And I have fond memories of, especially my dad in Florida, catching all types of fish just from shore. Most of them were small fish. And uh, he would have a frying pan and he would fry them up like this. Um, they were never filleted. They were always cut in chunks like this. And uh, I have fond memories that they tasted delicious. Okay, so as I'm coating the rest of them, I'm gonna shake off the excess. And I'm going to put them in and I'm laying them so that they're like steak side, one of the steak side down. You can hear that that oil is nice and hot. So the fish are frying well. That. I'm not going to crowd the frying pan. I'm going to do a couple of batches and I'm leaving the perch and the perch eggs and cheeks at the end because they're going to cook a little bit faster. And, you know, even though we only kept two walleye, we released a couple, and I lost a big one that I would have released anyway. Um, this is going to be plenty of fish for our meal today. We're going to really enjoy it. The fish have been frying in this cast iron pan for about uh, five, six minutes. So I'm suddenly taking a fork and very gently turning, turning the fish over. Walleye is such a delicate fish that you don't want to overcook it. I like the outside, the skin to get crunchy and crispy, but I like uh, the fish to stay moist on the inside. So you can hear as I'm turning it, that's the moisture from the upside of the fish that I'm turning over. I'm trying to go slow too, because I'm trying not to get splatters all over the all over the stove. I normally cover the fish while they're cooking, and I'll do that in a minute. But first I want to just flip them over. I can see that they're almost like a nice goldy color on the downside. 
So the nice thing too is that, you know, when you're frying fish, whether you're deep frying or pan frying, it doesn't take very long. So we're going to let that cook for another, I'm going to say about 10 minutes. I'm going to leave the cover on so that the heat stays in. And then we're going to do the second batch of the fish. And then they're going to be ready to enjoy. And I get to taste this garlic flavor for the first time, garlic butter. You know, when I'm cooking fish, sound is really important, whether I'm deep frying or I'm pan frying. You can hear that the sizzling has toned down, even when I take the top off. That means that the fish is cooked. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn the heat off because I don't need it on right now. And I've already got a platter ready with some uh, towels. And I'm going to take each piece out and I'm going to let it, any excess oil will be absorbed by that toweling material. And then I'll turn the heat back up and I'll do, you can see how nice that fish is looking. If you're a fish lover, you know how good they taste. And I don't mind cleaning the flesh away from the bones. And there's no, no fish wasted. Look at these beautiful steaks. Doesn't that look delicious? I can't wait to try these, but I got one more batch before I can enjoy the fish. Second batch of fish. You know, each bag of the outdoor flavors, that's about 19 servings. So it goes a long way. I've only used about maybe a third of the bag to do all these chunks of fish. And I'm not, I don't know that I'm gonna use all of it. It's the first time testing it like this, but I got a feeling that I put just the right amount out. It was guesswork. I think this last batch is gonna do it. I'm going to be able to uh, cook all the fish at one time. I can see that oil is starting to sizzle a little bit. You don't want to get the oil too hot because then you're going to burn, burn it unless you're using a canola oil. And I use it a lot, but because I'm doing such a large batch of fish, I'm using a uh, corn oil. One of my favorite is Mazzola corn oil, but any corn oil will work. I'm not so big on using uh, olive oil for frying fish. I know some people have uh, sent me messages saying you got to try beef fat. And I know, and look, anything with fat, you know, bacon, beef fat, um, cooking the fish in them is going to be delicious. But I'm also, the older I get, I'm also watching my salt content, you know, how much oil or cholesterol that I take in, if, especially if things are fried like this. So we don't have fish all the time, but we do try to have it two or three times a month. So we've got smoked whitefish in the fridge that we've been enjoying since November when the whitefish were running. And now we're having fresh walleye caught ice fishing. And for those of you that fish in the winter time, you know that it's hard to beat um, getting fresh walleye when the water's really cold. This is where I'm putting in the cheeks. coating them. I actually put just the right amount of coating in here. Make sure that this uh, perch has seasoning on the inside too, because a lot of that thin uh, flesh around the uh, flanks are going to be delicious to eat as well, and they're going to get cooked really well. There's the perch. And move some of the fish around to facilitate getting it in there and there we go and the egg sac we're just going to break the egg sac so that the heat can evenly cook it so what i've done is i've pierced the skein material and i'm opening the sac so this is what it looks like open those are the perch eggs and i'm going to coat them it's a special shout out to ray ebert raymond ebert was our guide up in Sault Ste. Marie oh about uh, 35 years ago when we shot a show he tried a uh, perch eggs because he called me he said you know can you eat perch eggs he said they're delicious one of my favorite parts of the fish okay let's let these fish cook and then we're going to enjoy them hey let's check on the second batch oh my goodness 
That is looking so good. Smells so good. You know, I love cleaning fish as much as I love catching them. I love cooking them just as much as catching them. And I really enjoy eating them. Voila. That means it's done. Look, here's the platter of fish ready to enjoy. Does that look good or what? But here's the real taste test. I'm going to try one piece. I'm not taking the piece that doesn't have any bones. I'm taking this piece right here. And the meat is nice and flaky. I don't know if you can see there. It looks beautiful. And I got to try it with this coating. That is a nice coating. It doesn't take the flavor away from the fish. Okay. Fish is done perfectly. Man, that is good stuff. There's the reason to go fishing. Release the big ones. Keep the smaller ones, the juveniles for eating. Don't waste any of them. If you haven't tried, I know most guys fillet because they're in a hurry, especially to get a lot of fish. But a lot of meat gets wasted. You know what? This is one of the best ways to enjoy fish and uh, not to have any wastage.